Hi hey guys, last week my attention was drawn to a long video where a Muslim apologist I have recently refuted and ridiculed several times went on a two-hour rant demonstrating a lot of what is wrong with Islam today and what vocal followers do that makes it even worse. A lot worse. Now in this extended monologue, the Muslim apologist who has given himself the name Hamza was hurt like to contradict himself, sometimes within seconds, which he seems to do quite often. I consider him to be well, quite primitive and his appeal is to the more simple Muslim who gets some sort of confirmation from what he hears from this guy. And here I want to show you why I think so. So let's listen in where he claims anyone can join him on his streams and can challenge his ideas and views. Now, I personally, I have no issue with anyone coming on. I think anyone can come on. I think anyone can come on and they can make their point, make their question, make their claim. Well, listening to this, it would be a welcome change. It would actually be a sensation and a complete turnaround from the current situation where for years now strict censorship has been applied by most Muslim apologists so that anyone challenging them has been quickly blocked and all their content was false flagged in an attempt to silence these critics. Then a lot of them were personally attacked as well as their families and friends. Now he as EF Dawa even filed an official but false copyright claim when he had nothing to counter my refutation video with. The problem is that Islam is incredibly weak. That is why it is incredibly easy to refute the claims due to lack of substance. Now these poor apologists don't really have anything substantial to counter any refutations or rebuttals. And I suppose that's why they resort to unlawful and desperate actions. I have hundreds of videos demonstrating this, some of which I have re-uploaded after my various channels were false flagged and shut down by Zealous Muslims. So does this guy actually mean what he just said? No, of course not. He's too scared to lose face in front of his fan club. He thus blocks anyone he perceives as being dangerous and a threat to his ego and his superficial and shallow line of argumentation something I have recently exposed in a mini-series I called Hamza the Muslim Apologist. No, our Mr. Hamza quickly changes his mind after he said this and then rose back this statement where anyone can join to present their questions, views, points, arguments and all views. No, only someone who is prepared to submit, to retract, to admit they are wrong even if they are right. Just because this Samza guy has no intellectual response. So he demands obedience and submission. So if you concede the point that actually uh, I was wrong or I was mistaken, oh yeah, you're right, should have thought of it that way, mm, all right, thanks for that, then you can come again. Then you can come again. If you maintain your stupidity, then you don't come again. Well, his criteria is very clear, isn't it? According to his deluded mind, I am begging for his attention. And only if I admit I am only presenting something wrong and stupid, do I get his attention that I allegedly crave so much. The thing is, I, I have a life in the real world. I don't need fairy tales, gods, goddesses, witches and sorcerers to elevate my importance or inflate my image and ego. He does. I don't make a penny from what I do here. He does. I use facts to expose false claims, the mistakes and outright lies. And he, the Muslim apologist, doesn't. Like all Muslim apologists, he has faith and fakes. And that is why I do this as a kind of a self-defense mechanism to, well, A, make Muslims think and B, warn non-Muslims who don't know Islam so well and are not aware of the downright and dishonest tactics at play here.
yeah, so start spamming is more than enough chances. When asked why I specifically am not allowed to present my case, this is deluded Hamza really says on public record that I have had enough chances. To do what exactly? I remember once where I was able to show on a different stream why not believing when there are no good reasons to is the rational thing to do. And I, there was one occasion where I sat listening to a guy called Imran go on and on about totally irrelevant things. And then I was swiftly removed. So I've never, not once, really been able to challenge their claims on one of their streams. But hang on, something must have stung him in what I did with his claims in my mini-series, because he says this. Well, stop spamming, it's so annoying. And so, and he, and he, he cuts things and he does this mock review. Uh, I have no time for stop spamming. <laughs> okay, so instead of taking my advice, he blocks what I have to say and pretends it's irrelevant because he has nothing to counter my facts. Now, interesting enough, back in 2017, I analyzed and refuted his claims in a video called Atheist Slash Agnostic Refuted by Science, where he constantly contradicts himself, saying something can't come from nothing, and at the same time postulating that the universe did come from nothing. Because you, nothing causes nothing. Nothing comes from nothing. Yeah. I'm saying God created the universe out of nothing. Out of nothing. I'm saying that, yeah. <laughs> it says it's nothing. And I did not claim it's nothing within one sentence. What do you mean? What does that mean? It means nothing. I didn't claim it means nothing. So based on this mess, well, I provided sound and useful advice, which he doesn't like, apparently. So he launched this false and unlawful copyright claim, which YouTube eventually rejected. Now, he's actually switched one of the videos I was responding to to private. It was probably too embarrassing. What he does here now is demonstrate the Hamza continuous consistence confusedness something. I think anyone can come on. Uh, I have no time for stuff like that. So, oh dear, I must have hurt the poor guy. What What is hilarious is that, once again, he says that Rob or James can join, but only if they admit they are wrong. And James, yeah, I'm happy to let James off. No problem at all. Even you, Rob, you want to come on with a point? Come on, make a point. No problem. But if you don't concede your point, if it's been refuted, then you'll have, re then I'll have, re then you'd be on the block list, obviously. He doesn't even consider the possibility of him being wrong, of him requiring some basic education or an update of his knowledge base. He is arrogant and deluded enough to think that a, a silly, a bad or wrong answer from him is considered not only an answer, but a sufficient and adequate answer, a valid response. where. Anyone confronted with a silly or wrong answer now needs to roll over and admit defeat. <laughs> now this shows again the harmful side effects of Islam, where a person will, well, for example, attempt to summarize a question or provide an analogy, failing miserably at both, because the Islam virus has taken over and is in full control, prompting this false sense of supremacy. I think anyone can come on. I think anyone can come on and they can make their point, make their question, make their claim. a platform on um, humiliating and trying to uh, attack Islam. Uh, that's your platform. And you don't need that here. So if you want to hate, you can hate on your own channel. I think anyone can come on. No, we don't hate and definitely not Muslims. Yeah, we're critical of political Islam and use facts, data and reality to demonstrate what the problem areas are and why we consider them to be problems. But we are still open to any kind of constructive criticism and always make sure we invite Muslims not to debate or show them up, but to educate us, to show us if we are wrong and where we are wrong or simply show us their point of view. So 
in a sense, we are better Muslims than the Muslim apologists we hear shouting the loudest, the ones from the UK, spreading all this false information and building trenches and walls to block all voices of reason instead of building bridges. They are commanded by the God they believe exists in chapter 16, sentence 125, Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good advice and debate with them in the best manner possible. Now, we do exactly that. They don't. But they think they will go to heaven and we will go to hell. <laughs> Talk about cognitive dissonance. Those that are blatant Islamophobes attacking Islam and building their platform on attacking Islam, as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you won't be doing it here. I think anyone can come on. I think anyone can come on. And they can make their point, make their question, make their claim. Those that are blatant Islamophobes attacking Islam and building their platform on attacking Islam, as a Muslim, alhamdulillah, you won't be doing it here. Has anyone come up with a useful definition of this silly and awkward term? Well, not to my knowledge. Are we, are we really attacking, attacking Islam? No, that would be destructive and not constructive. We try and support, suggest, offer advice and provide viable alternatives. We substitute false claims with truth and evidence. We counter fairy tales with reality. Now, mainly we ask questions to help people realize for themselves where the problem is, to avoid being too assertive. And we try not to command or prescribe. So. If a Muslim apologist, like the one here in this video, has a misconception or a false impression, there doesn't seem to be a way to correct it. As we see here, this guy is simply interested in only one thing, looking good to his fan base and not allowing anyone spoil that by asking questions he can't answer. Because that might make a viewer doubt and do what is not allowed in Islam, that is, ask awkward questions, him or herself. So our red beard Hamza does everything to run and hide from any serious challenge, contradicting himself while bravely running away. They're Islamophobes, complete, and their platform is that. And so it's pointless. Because as soon as we get to Islam, as soon as we talk about Islam, that's where they're going to start with all this nonsense. And we don't need it. Here, here we're trying to uh, establish what's true. Now, when confronted with Islamic apologists and their claims or the claims made in the Quran, I address these by providing facts or data from the real world. That's not nonsense. That's real. If he and his fellow apologists believe that, I don't know, two thirds plus one third plus an eighth or something equals one, then I can use basic arithmetic to show this is wrong. That's not nonsense. If they then make things fit by changing the numbers, I can point out that they are changing the numbers. But in the eyes of a Muslim apologist, I'm now a hater, an Islam or phobe. <laughs> now, he claims he delivers the truth. Then why is he so scared? I'd, I don't need exposure or attention. I'm interested in facts and the truth, not the label but the contents that should be truthful. Like apologists use the label science, but reject it if it doesn't agree with their emotions. What is truly amazing is his statement that the Quran contains embryology, when almost everyone, and Muslims included, acknowledge by now in the 21st century that this is not the case. He even goes so far as to mention Keith more, where almost everyone, Muslims included, acknowledge that this is fake, just fabrication and deception. Now, our little Hamza does not, or pretends he doesn't, or maybe really he does not know. But it is so incredibly easy to demonstrate. Now, this Moor guy has no clue what the Quran says. Writing in his bestseller book, The Developing Human, that the Quran, and I quote, states that the resulting organism settles in the womb like a seed six days after its beginning. Now, which of course the Quran does not say. But these five or six sentences in, in this paragraph 
are all that Moore mentions in his entire book. Not, not in the text itself, but in the introduction, as in historical gleanings, showing the ignorance at that time. Now, why can't this Hamza show just a bit of honesty and state this and accept this and see it for what it is? No, his Quran is not on point and not correct, but quite the opposite, hopelessly wrong. But now what is Hamza trying to achieve at the end of the day? Well, quite simply, he tries to change minds. He tries to show how wonderful his book is and in extension, his ideology using deception, using lies. Has he no moral compass? Now, I just try to get people thinking using facts and reality because I don't need to deceive anyone and can remain honest and ethical. So my morality is on a much higher level than that of a Muslim apologist who must lie to make a point. No, I'm aware. I'm aware of who people are. I remember, I remember I maybe I blocked stops coming on the EFL channel, if I'm not wrong. Finally, he even admits to blocking me for, well, number one, delivering facts, and number two, showing him where he is wrong when it comes to science, when it comes to claims in the Quran, when it comes to his lack of understanding even the basics of what makes a non-believer a non-believer or a theist. So how can I help this poor guy when he rejects any help and is deluded to the extent that he thinks he doesn't need help and is too arrogant to take a step back and review his beliefs? And then to put the icing on top with a cherry and all the trimmings, here's his wet dream right here. Muslims need to bait non-Muslims to come to his show just so that he can rinse them. You need to come to us to aid for this. I need you to bait out non-Muslims who are so arrogant in their beliefs that they're willing to come onto the arena because it's a scary place. So uh, of this, okay, I'm sorry, but this idiot is deluded enough to really imagine the outright stupid ramblings delivered by him and his co-panelists are in any way fit to impress a non-Muslim. They are unable to process the questions, let alone answer them. They are too scared to come out and chat to anyone who knows a bit about Islam and heroically run and hide, blocking those they see as a possible threat, instead sitting in their own little bubble and in the echo chamber where they are trying not to get any negative views. Yet he still thinks he can bait non-Muslims to join them as long as they are naive and will immediately admit defeat if someone as much as opens their mouth to provide what they think is a reply. I will, I will just give you two small examples of why I think these streams are so dreadfully silly and dishonest. Hamza, what do you think of Tom Holland's claim that the earliest Kiblers face Petra and not Mecca? It's all been refuted. There's nothing these jokers say that hasn't been refuted. Now, number one, Tom Holland did not even make that claim. Right? Hamza Redbeard does not realize that and makes these grand claims that he's seen the documentary and understood it, as well as so-called refutations, which don't exist. So he has not understood either. And number two, I've seen several attempts at twisting things and fabrications, but no real refutations. And just to clarify things, we had Tom Holland on the show and he actually endorsed my fact check video I made as a response to the Aero concoction. And it's only sad when apologists are in over their heads and start fabricating stuff. But that is what happens. And this example shows how his mind works. It's all about the money. Bring some controversial topics, pretend like you're in charge, and expect plenty of donations from naive Muslims who crave confirmation where Islam admittedly is going through really tough times, where reality poses a huge obstacle for... It's just a silly fairy tale that, you know, that Muslims must believe. And if you can't get enough money from Muslims, why not charge non-Muslims for asking a question or correcting one of his multiple mistakes?
It makes me sick. I'll give this one for free, uh, Unicorn Gav. Just so you know, we do a troll tax here. So anything, you want any attention here as a troll in the chat, um, you're going to have to pay a super chat. And Islam and money. Inseparable. Okay. That's all from me today. Have a wonderful evening, a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, a wonderful month, a wonderful life in spite of Corona. And stay safe. See you in the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.